Hi guys, welcome to my channel. This is your Agni Aunt. I recently gave AWS Cloud Practitioner exam and I am now a certified cloud practitioner. I studied for just a week and today I'm going to tell you tips and tricks I followed to give my exam. Also, I will tell you my experience on the exam day. Before starting on the tips, I would like to say one thing that I have done and completed the preparation in just a week, then it doesn't mean you have the same capacity. Your preparation can take a day or two or your preparation can take months. Do not feel the pressure if I have done in a week, then you have to do the same. Just check your capacity first. Also, I thought of giving this exam three months back and due to some personal reasons, I was un unable to prepare. So I did my preparation in just a week and I was ready to give my first attempt. So I did uh, book my exam slot just a day before my actual exam. So you can also do the same. Do not pre-book your exam. Just prepare yourself first. No matter how much time does it take. When you feel the time is right, just book your exam a day or two before. Let's start. So first point I'm going to cover is who should give this certification exam and who are eligible. If you are someone who is engaged in cloud practice for at least six months, then you are eligible to take this certification exam. Irrespective of your job role, whether you are a software engineer or a developer or a consultant or an advisor or whatever job role you are in. More details about this is displayed on the screen. You can pause the video and have a look. Second point I'm going to cover is the cost of this exam. This exam cost 118 US dollars, including tax. So third point I want to cover is pattern of the exam. There will be a total of 65 questions, including multiple choice questions and multiple response questions. And you will be given a time limit of 90 minutes to complete this exam. Overall, you will be given 100 minutes, 90 minutes to complete this exam and 10 minutes to fill out the survey at the end of the exam. And if you are a non-native English speaker, then you can ask your proctor on exam day to provide you 30 minutes extra for your exam. So this way you will have 130 minutes to complete your exam. Fourth point I'm going to cover is mode of the exam. You can either opt for an online mode or an offline mode. If you choose the offline mode exam, then you have to select the test center nearby and the time slot. I would suggest to book the offline mode exam at least two to three days before your actual exam date. If you choose the online mode exam, then you have to choose the time slot and you need to download the software as suggested by them so that they can proctor you. In case you have a laptop provided by your organization, then do check this with your organization in advance whether they are ready for that application to be downloaded on their laptop as you are going to be monitored throughout the exam. In case your organization denies you to download such applications or software, then you have to keep your personal laptop as a backup. And I would advise you to use your personal laptop to avoid such incidents. And you can book your online exam a day before your actual exam too. If you are sure of the date of the exam, then you can book any time before the actual exam date. So fifth point I want to cover is on actual exam day. As I told you, I had booked an online slot for me, so I gave the exam from the comfort of my home. Guidelines that they want us to follow for online exam includes that you should not have any electronic items near you, say mobile phones, extra laptop, no pen or paper, or say study material near you, or, and watches are not allowed. There should not be anyone in the room except you. They will ask you to rotate your webcam or laptop camera 360 degrees to check whether you are following the guidelines or not. You are also not allowed to speak up any questions. You just have to read the questions in your mind. Bizarre thing I just noticed was that they asked us that we should not be having any mobile phones uh, and any electronic items near us. And then when I just said to give my exam, they asked me to scan the barcode displayed on the screen using my mobile phone. Via that, I had to upload the pictures of my surroundings and had to upload the proof of my identity. Identity can include your driving license or passport or any government ID that displays your clear name and signature. So I captured the pictures of my surroundings and uploaded it and then I ran away from my place and kept my mobile phone outside my room and then I came back. 
so it's a kind of an irony when uh, we are not supposed to have mobile phones but we are asked to use the same that to when we are all set to give an exam so that was all about an exam day moving to the last and very important point what approach you should follow to prepare for exam so there are two approaches to follow for this exam preparation and whatever suits you you can opt that first approach is if you have extra money to spend then go ahead and take udemy course and mock test with the mock test you will get an idea how your actual exam will look like and with multiple mock tests you can easily remember the answers this will help you on your actual exam day second approach is if you do not want to spend a penny on any course then you can use this approach when you register yourself on aws and search for aws training and search for the course name the that is aws cloud practitioner you will found the foundational course of 6 hours and you can enroll yourself for this course and it is absolutely free in addition to this you will get a set of sample questions for free also refer aws white papers and guide it will help you in your exam and apart from all these references i would like to give you some keywords that you should definitely study and from an exam point of view these topics are extremely important so let me tell you those important 25 terminologies first amazon athena second amazon quick site third amazon sns that is simple notification service fourth amazon sqs that is simple queue service fifth amazon ec2 sixth cost explorer seventh aws cost and budget uh, cost and usage report um 8th aws lambda 9th aws aurora 10th a amazon dynamo db 11th amazon rds 12th amazon redshift 13th amazon uh, aws budgets 14th aws cloud trail 15th amazon cloud watch 16th aws cost and usage report 17th aws organizations 18th aws trusted advisor 19th a amazon cloud front 20 amazon messi 21 ms aws shield 22 aws wf 23 amazon efs that is elastic file system 24 amazon s3 and s3 glacier 25 ms aws snowball so these are 25 important items that i have listed so far and for you and it, these are displayed on the screen you can pause the video and have a look on this with this the second approach ends and i personally found second approach the better one because if you use the first approach you will try to cram all the answers and you will make an answer a keyword in your mind but in actual exam questions become answers and answers become questions for that you should have a deep knowledge of the concepts If you have time then mix of both the approaches are the best way to crack the exam in the first attempt also AWS is frequently changing the exam question pattern so do not trust on the mock test for passing the exam anyways you can use any approach whatever suits you the best hope this video helps you thank you